T O R Tor. These three letters raise millions of questions about this mysterious piece of software. Today, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about Tor, why it isn't scary, and why it's such an important tool in our digital age. If you enjoy Go Incognito and our thorough approach to security, privacy, and anonymity, but you want some more individualized attention and help, we just publicly open consulting. This is a premium and limited service that can only accommodate a few people. So if you're interested in getting that individual support, we're here to help you out and get you taken care of to fast forward your privacy today. Enjoy this next lesson. The Onion Router, or Tor, is a group of servers that improve your privacy and security on the internet. Normally, without Tor, you directly connect to a site like techlore.tech. Tor will obscure this connection by adding nodes, and every given amount of time, the chain of nodes changes without disruption to you. So unless your entry point and exit points become associated somehow, your connection is considered anonymous because of the difficulty required to backtrack in such a short span of time. This is all very cool. But to start, I want to clear up the biggest misconception with Tor. It's only used by criminals! Tor has an insane amount of use cases. It allows you to circumvent censorship, allows journalists to post in repressive regimes, gives law enforcement the power to go undercover, gives the ability to leave truly anonymous tip lines, gives support for activists and whistleblowers, and obviously it can be used like many of you taking this course to improve your privacy and security. Since Tor is such a powerful tool, it is used for criminal activities, but it's important to understand that there is an enormous amount of good that Tor does, and we can't let the bad side ruin its reputation. What now? Well, there's something called the Tor Browser Bundle. It's built on Firefox and sends your internet traffic through Tor. The Tor Browser functions as an anonymization tool by blending users together to look the same. This ties in with browser uniqueness, which I discussed back in Lesson 3.10. As long as you're using the Tor browser properly, which means not using your personal information in any anonymous session, and not configuring or using the browser in a unique way, you are hypothetically anonymous. You can also access the Tor network on an operating system level to route all of your traffic through Tor, not just web traffic. You can do this by using an OS like Tails or Hunix, two phenomenal projects that attempt to anonymize your entire system. These were both discussed in the previous lesson. So, wow, Henry, Tor is perfect. Well, not so quick. First, it's not foolproof. You need to use it properly. If you log into a personal account within an anonymous session, your anonymous session we consider to be compromised. If you install third-party extensions that make you stand out from other users, you failed. If you type or use the browser in a unique fashion, you failed. Go back to browsing habits to learn more about behavioral analysis. The takeaway is Tor isn't foolproof, like every other tool we discuss in Go Incognito. Second, Tor doesn't protect you from correlation attacks. If your attacker can watch the traffic coming out of your computer, as well as the traffic arriving at your destination, they can still use some basic analysis to figure out who's doing what. Third, you can't control exit nodes, which may be under the control of governments or law enforcement, although there is little evidence this is a widespread problem. Fourth, Tor is slow, like really slow, especially if you configure it for max safety in the settings. So don't expect a speedy experience here. Fifth, some websites won't work when you're connected to Tor. Either you'll be blocked out entirely, or sites like Google will require annoying captchas, which will take up your entire day. Those are the major downsides, but here are some extra tips to help out with those downsides and or other things to watch out for. First, be careful with third-party solutions and anyone who claims to give you access to Tor. Use trusted services. Remember that the purpose of Tor is to blend users together, so simply connecting to Tor without a common fingerprint is close to useless for anonymization. This is our main criticism of the Tor functionality within the Brave browser. Second, the Tor browser bundle isn't perfect. For Windows, it was instrumental in taking down Freedom Hosting and the Silk Road because of unpatched vulnerabilities. The safest way to use Tor is using something like Hunix or Tails, not the Tor Browser Bundle, although it's still an excellent tool that serves its function for simple use. Third, avoid using the same exit nodes every time you use Tor. There is speculation that government agencies control some exit nodes, so using different ones consistently is not a bad move to spread out your traffic. The fourth and last area of discussion is VPNs. Should you use a VPN with Tor? This is widely debated, there are many different configurations out there. Here are the main ones and the pros and cons to each. 
You can connect to a VPN and then route your tour session through the VPN. This will stop your ISP from seeing the tour session, but it will leave your exit node unencrypted and vulnerable. Adding a VPN connection at the end will encrypt your traffic leaving the tour network, but now your ISP can see when you use tour. There are configurations out there that allow you to add a VPN before and after your tour configuration, and even then you still have to trust your VPN provider to not do anything malicious. Overall, if you don't know, it's better not to combine the tools. Let's bring everything back together. To get proper anonymization, you should use Tor for traffic that isn't tied to your personal identity, or else your anonymous session is no longer anonymous. If you're going to do some quick research, do it on Tor so we have some good healthy amount of traffic pumping through it. If you need to do something that involves your personal identity, I would recommend using a hardened web browser, which we did in section 3. It's not possible to make yourself anonymous. You have email accounts, bank accounts, social security numbers, so don't worry about anonymizing your personal life. Worry about separating your anonymous life from your personal life by compartmentalizing everything you can. To get started with Tor, visit their website and download the bundle for your system. There's Orbots for Android, as well as now an actual Tor browser for Android. For iOS, there's the Onion browser. Don't forget about Hoonix and Tails if you want something to route your entire operating system through Tor. If you're not a Tor believer, there are other projects out there designed to try and replace Tor, or at least work alongside them, most notably I2P and Freenet. This has been a very long talk, but I hope it cleared up a lot about Tor and the misconceptions behind it. I want to take this time to thank those of you who are watching this lesson. It's just such an honor to be here and teach you about this project. Um, I'll see you in the next lesson where we will cover anonymity relating to cryptocurrencies. Thanks for watching.